Hello. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 3.3 day 3 on permutations and combinations. In 3.3 day 1, we looked at permutations, and in 3.3 day 2, we looked at combinations. Today we're going to put both together and we're going to practice first determining whether a problem is a permutation problem or a combination problem, and then using either the permutation or the combination to determine the number of ways the event can occur. For our first example here, example seven, we are going to identify whether to use a permutation or a combination to solve the problem. We'll start by stating if each situation involves a permutation or a combination, and then we'll actually calculate the number of possibilities. Now remember the difference between permutations and combinations. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in a specific order. The order matters. You also use permutations anytime you're assigning things to unique positions. Like if I was going to pick a president and a vice president, the order you pick matters because a president is different from a vice president. So if the order matters or you're assigning things to unique positions, that's going to be a permutation. If the order is not important, that's a combination. Oftentimes with a combination, you're just making like a group or a team or a committee, something where everybody's doing the same thing and you're just making a group of people. So let's look at each of these situations here. Um, for part A, we have five out of 13 students will ride in a car instead of the van. Okay, five out of the 13. We're not picking which seats they're sitting in in the car. We're just picking which five students are going to ride in the car instead of the van. So since order doesn't matter, this is a combination problem. That's the first part of our answer. Then we'll actually calculate it. We have a total of 13 students. That's my N. And I want to pick five of them. So R is five. 13 C5. We can put into a calculator. Remember, when you're typing this in your calculator, you can start by typing in the number n, so type 13, then go to math, arrow over to probability, and we want the combination, which is the third one down here. Click enter, and now you can fill in your r of 5. 13c5 is 1,287. So that's going to be the second part of our answer. There's 1,287 ways that we can pick five students to ride in the car instead of the van. Now let's look at situation B. We have a group of 45 people are going to run a race, and the top three runners earn gold, silver, and bronze. Here, gold, silver, and bronze are unique positions, so the order matters. And since the order matters, that makes it a permutation. Gold, silver, and bronze are unique positions. The order matters since each position is different. There's a total of 45 people, so that's our N. And then the top three runners, so R is three, get the gold, silver, and bronze medals. That means we have 45 P3. And once again, we can put that into the graphing calculator. On the calculator, type your n value of 45, then click the math button, arrow over to probability, and choose NPR, which is choice 2 here. And now I can fill in my 3. 45P3 ends up being 85,140. So that is our final answer. Let's look at part C here. A photographer is taking pictures of a bride and groom and the six people in their wedding party. If she takes photographs of three people in a group, how many different groups can she photograph? Now be careful on this question because there's actually more than six people. The six people is just the wedding party. 
we also need to include the bride and the groom, which is an additional two people. So two plus six is eight. We have eight people to pick from, and the photographer wants to take pictures of people in groups of three. For groups of three, the order doesn't matter. We just want to pair three people together. So our n value, our total, is eight, and our r is three. And since order doesn't matter, this is another combination problem. And we have eight C3. We can put that into the graphing calculator again, and eight C3 ends up being 56. So there are 56 different groups of three that the photographer could take that would include three people out of the bride, the groom, and the six people in their wedding party. Here are a couple try now problems for you to try on your own. Just like in the example above, I want you to start by trying to decide whether it's a permutation or a combination. Remember that for permutations, the order matters or you're assigning people to unique positions. If it's a combination, the order isn't important. You're just making a group or a team or a committee. Keeping that in mind, um, please pause the video now and give these two try now problems a try on your own. When you hit play again, I will have the solutions posted. Let's actually talk through these two. So for the first one, number one, there's 15 applicants for four jobs, and these four jobs are unique. There's a computer programmer, a software tester, a manager, and a systems engineer. So because those are unique positions, we need to use a permutation to solve the problem. There are 15 applicants, so N is our 15, 15 total people, and we're assigning four of them to unique jobs. So 15 P4, you can put that into a graphing calculator, and you'll end up with an answer of 32,760. Problem two here, we have an ice cream shop with 10 different toppings, and you're choosing three of the toppings for your ice cream sundae. When you're mixing toppings together for an ice cream sundae, the order isn't important. You're just going to mix all the ice cream toppings together anyways. So this would be an example of a combination. And we have 10 toppings to pick from. We're picking three. So 10 C3 is going to be equal to 120. So that's 120 different ice cream sundaes that you can make with three toppings. And this concludes lesson 3.3, day three. Your homework assignment is going to have you practicing, determining if something's a permutation or a combination, and then calculating the value. Remember that you can use your graphing calculator to help you find the number of ways that the thing can occur. You just have to decide on your own first whether it's a permutation or a combination. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.